Water quality at South Bay beaches may be clean, but that's not always the case on the sand. Volunteers got their hands dirty at the annual event aimed at cleaning up the coast. Reporter Christy Kapik was there. Jin, Ben, today is such an awesome day outside. It's such a beautiful day for all the volunteers that are coming out for Coastal Cleanup Day. The first 250 have gotten this cute little bucket here to collect some waste on the beach, but Heal the Bay is expecting over 500 volunteers today to clean up. Heal the Bay has had volunteers lining up since 1985 to keep our beaches clean. Since then, the city, American Honda, and the Chamber of Commerce have also come on board to make it a true community effort. Turnout is really fantastic here at uh, Torrance. We've been coming, I've been coming down here for more than five years. Honda has been coming down here for that long. The city of Torrance has been, and it's really been exciting to watch the evolution of this event. An evolution it truly is. Last year, Coastal Cleanup brought in over 347,000 pounds of trash and 14,000 volunteers in L.A. County. And this year is expected to be a success, too. When we turned in our data card, we had 210 cigarette butts that we found. Uh, we went to the last lifeguard station down the way, and somebody was probably having a party last night where we picked up a lot of plastic bottles and some sh tennis shoes, discarded socks and stuff like that. Plastic is the biggest concern because it lasts decades and often looks like food to animals. And although it seems likely the trash comes from beachgoers, it's surprising where most of the trash actually comes from. The main source of trash is the inland community. 80% of the trash comes down onto the beach through the storm drain systems. Heal the Bay supplied buckets and reusable bags while educating hundreds of participants, but most didn't seem to be novices at community service. We're out here um, with the Cub Scout Pack 851, and we're going to um, satisfy the conserva International Conservation Award. Last year when I worked it, I had a lot of friends come because we, had, we have a marine biology class that you have to come down and serve so many years cleaning up the beach, so a lot of the time you do see people that you know from school. For Coastal Cleanup Day, they actually divide out the recycling from the regular trash. And I was told by one person that they will probably collect about 500 pounds of trash today just off of Torrance Beach. I'm Christy Kapik reporting for City Cable 3. The Los Angeles County Department of Beaches and Harbors helps organize the event with Heal the Bay and Coastal Cities. Each year, the event brings out more than 10,000 volunteers to more than 50 sites. For more information, go to healthebay.org. In an effort to live green, Southern California Edison is shedding some light on light bulbs. Reporter Siobhan Field explains. South Bay residents came out in droves this weekend looking to take advantage of Southern California Edison's lamp exchange program where they can bring in their old energy inefficient light fixtures and exchange them for technology utilizing pin based bulbs. Yesterday we gave away 5,397 lamps and today we're getting close to finishing everything that we have which will be approximately another 3,000 lamps. Scott Gobble believes in the program so much that he arrived at the Kmart parking lot early on Sunday to trade in two lamps for himself. He says Saturday's turnout set a record for the lamp exchange, which has been run by Southern California Edison at various locations for the past four years. People recognize that changing out a lamp that used to have a 60 watt or 100 watt light bulb in it, and you can get the energy efficient ones that are only 15 watts or 20 watts, that they're saving uh, three times uh, the electricity. Residents could bring up to 10 energy inefficient lamps that could be exchanged for brand new models using compact fluorescent light bulbs, also known as CFLs. Energy Star, a program run by the Environmental Protection Agency, recommends that everyone make the switch from traditional incandescent bulbs to pin-based CFLs. The lamp exchange is financed by the public goods charge found on electricity bills. Customers can choose one of three new lamp options that are the same size as the light fixtures they returned. South Bay residents were able to upgrade the lamps in their homes while also contributing positively to the environment. If we are not conscious about it, um, pretty soon we're going to run out of our resources. And it's going to be not very good for us, you know, for our children. Congresswoman Jane Harmon greeted customers as they arrived and applauded their efforts to be ecologically sustainable. By trading in their old incandescent light bulbs, which are 5% uh, light and 95% heat, 
uh, for uh, these uh, future light bulbs, uh, these low emitting diodes and new lamps that hold the bulbs. Uh, these folks are going to see immediate savings on their electric bills and they're also going to help our environment. I'm thrilled about this. Uh, this is uh, another example of the South Bay leading the way on the environment. South Bay residents say the Lamp Exchange program is proof that we can each do our part by making small changes. Not everybody has to take drastic measures and buy solar panels and do all that, but if everybody takes a small step, then uh, we can make a big difference. Hopefully everyone's houses can look like this one day. Exactly. People can take advantage of a lot of the products that are available and uh, save money and save the environment. For City Cable 3, I'm Siobhan Field. Thanks, Siobhan. And for more information, go to the Southern California Edison website at SCELampExchange.com. The changing landscape of downtown Torrance now includes a new cafe, and it's no surprise that business owners are looking to this historic district. The city's incentives are attractive to all kinds of entrepreneurs. Reporter Fawn Keim has more. Old Torrance Coffee and Tea is a new business in town enjoying life breathed into the area thanks to the downtown redevelopment project. Restaurateur Michael Schaefer popped in for a quick coffee at the new cafe. Schaefer owns several businesses down the street and understands the importance of the redevelopment program. The redevelopment program, first of all, has unbelievably enhanced downtown Torrance, first of all. Uh, when I moved into the neighborhood in 91, where the El Prado whole reconstruction area was, was a crack house and a broken bottle parking lot and now it's turned into uh, viable businesses, revenue and a meeting area for the community. Schaefer's first restaurant, The Depot, benefited from the city's commercial rebate program which reimburses owners for half the cost of any exterior improvements. Owners can receive up to $40,000. Jeffrey Gibson, Torrance's deputy executive director of the redevelopment agency is also enthused about the program. And really the goal is to bring um, a life back to downtown Torrance both day and night. Uh, we are, we're very proud of the historical significance of some of the buildings in the downtown and we're trying very hard to to maintain that uh, those buildings in a historic context so that we can actually breathe some history back to into the downtown and, and have it as a uh, um, kind of a, a look back as to what Torrance was when we were first incorporated and, and we're very excited uh, about our efforts to do that. Those efforts have greatly improved business for everyone in downtown Torrance and it has increased total property valuation from seven million dollars to a staggering 197 in 2008. And Gibson is eager to assist more businesses that fall within the city's criteria. We have various programs in, uh, in place which could assist a uh, business in relocating to the downtown and I would encourage a business who is interested in relocating to, to contact us and we can talk more specifically about what is available what might not be av available. And when new doors open for business, the downtown community is eager to see this new establishment thrive. Gary Zimmerman has felt this impact his bottom line. Excellent. Just a lot of community support. Everybody's been very happy that we're here. In, uh, just a lot of support from all the local businesses and people. Fawn Keim, Torrance City Cable, Channel 3. And for more information on Torrance's redevelopment agency, go to the city's website at torrancecA.gov. And a local news reporting legend now makes news of his own with his new book. Reporter Siobhan Field has more. He's covered every major event in Southern California for more than 60 years. Legendary KTLA newsman Stan Chambers retired in August of this year, but he took the time today to meet with South Bay residents to discuss his career and sign copies of his book, KTLA's News at 10. Nice to see you. Well, to be natural, to be yourself, to be accurate, to face the problems and answer them, uh, put everything on the table. Stan Chambers has seen and heard it all throughout his career, walking hand in hand with Southern Californian viewers every step of the way. One of the first stories he covered for his one and only employer KTLA was that of little Kathy Fiscus, the three-year-old San Marino girl who fell down a well in 1949. And then to find out that the whole city or those who could get near a television set were watching uh, was a very emotional experience and we all felt that personal loss when they told us that Kathy would not make it. 
It was a revolutionary moment in television news. TV sets were new to the American public and Stan Chambers had viewers nationwide glued to his compelling live coverage of the tragic event for 27 and a half hours straight. Chambers is credited with being the first reporter to cover a breaking news event live in the US, a monumental achievement that has had a lasting impact on the way television news is delivered. So the uh, immediacy of television now the fact that you can go lively, go live just like that is very powerful. In those years, uh, we only went live for big major stories. And uh, yeah, it was a very big thing. Now you go live every day. Chambers broke the Rodney King story in 1991. He covered rose parades and presidential visits, the Watts riots, Manson murders, the assassination of Robert Kennedy, countless wildfires and the Northridge quake. His grandson Jamie Chambers is currently a reporter with KTLA and a recipient of Chambers Sr's wealth of journalistic and historical knowledge. I was told the camera is another person and you know you're talking to somebody and you're not talking into a camera. So I think it helps you mentally that when you're looking at that camera, you're looking at someone at home in the living room and you're talking to him. The man you see on the air is the man he really is. He has tremendous empathy and, and he immediately makes you feel like you know him. Nancy shed a tear during her father's presentation at the Katie Geisert Library. An oncology nurse at a South Bay hospital, neither Nancy nor her siblings followed their father into journalism. She understands the long hours and exhaustion that go into guiding viewers through the major events of the day. We all knew that you have to have that special kind of personality to just be on like that for so many hours at a time. And he also um, enjoys people. He's intrigued by personalities and special events. So he was just always had the energy, he was always up for excitement. and uh, he, you you know, he made us feel tired watching him. Son Robbie is at high school and already taking steps in the direction of his grandfather, inspired by him personally and professionally. 63 years of, of TV, but he, I mean, he still does his best to, like, talk to his family and try and build a relationship with each and every one of his 36 grandchildren, which is pretty remarkable. Do you encourage your grandchildren to go into news? Oh, yes. I, it's... And it's what we've been saying, it's a challenge that you answer each and every day. A challenge this extraordinary newsman will miss every day. <laughs> the 87-year-old speaks fondly of his time reporting locally and abroad in his book KTLA News at 10. Asked if he might broaden his leisure travel horizons now that he has the time, Chambers stays true to the Californian landscape that he has reported on for so long. I, I really, really do enjoy it. It's uh, a little overwhelming right now for me to say, I think I'm going to go to Japan. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe I can go to Catalina Island. <laughs> for City Cable 3, I'm Siobhan Field. Stan Chambers' book, KTLA News at 10, is available at Amazon.com. Coming up, we'll tell you about an event that allows you to peek into some of the most beautiful homes in the South Bay. Now, here's your five-day forecast.